Welcome to Forbes Newsroom. Joining me now is Zach Everson, a staff writer here at Forbes. Zach, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me on again, Brittany. Of course, you have some big news. A prominent member of Congress is under investigation by the House Ethics Committee. Can you tell us who? Yes, it is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. We found this out today when the House Committee on Ethics put out a very short, brief press release just announcing that um, an inquiry into her had been forwarded to them and that they are continuing the matter. And the reason this came out is that they're required to either share their findings or announce that they're extending them within 45 days of when they get the matter in the first place. Was her being under investigation a surprise? Um, yeah, I mean, this, this information is, is private. They do a really good job of holding this close. Uh, you don't hear a lot of rumors about these kind of things unless it's you know, sometimes you might see it originally reported. You know, if it's a stock transaction, that's not too surprising. If somebody forgot to file their um, disclosures in a certain amount of time, usually somebody's already reported on it. But in this case, there, there hasn't been anything uh, that stands out amongst previous recording about uh, AOC. I know there aren't too many details, so I do want to talk about these types of invest investigations. Um, as a whole. So what other members of Congress have been under these types of investigations? Well, there, there's several and a lot of them. It has to do with um, usually it's conflicts of interest mm -hmm. and it's 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 financial. It's uh, you know, just yesterday we learned that Madison Cawthorn was under investigation for his uh, crypto dealings and that he had uh, promoted a cryptocurrency and didn't disclose it and sold it right before it right as it was um, as the price was plummeting. So issues like that are usually Duncan Hunter's another famous one and people who kind of uh, enjoy the spoils of their office. And what are the punishments here? And they could range. I mean, it, it's, there's a wide range. It's probably very little. You know, this is this is four Republicans and four Democrats who are deciding on punishments here. Uh, you know, the fact that they find Cawthorn yesterday was a surprise. It was um, they find him fifteen thousand dollars to pay back his ill-gotten gains. Um, they could have just let that one. They could have let him run out the clock on that. So it doesn't seem like it's going to be all that much. But again, who knows? If there aren't really punishments and if it's more just a slap on the wrist, then why even bring it up in the first place? That is an excellent question. Um, you know, and my take is a lot of the ethics involved in the house is uh, is window dressing. And you know, they have the way this works is they have this um, nonpartisan Office of Congressional Ethics that's made up of no members of Congress. It's just perfect career government employees. And they will either initiate an investigation or they'll get something referred. And this is what happened here today with AOC. And they will take a look at it. They will vote on the matter. And then they will either refer it or not to the House committee. And it's the House committee that then would be the one to uh, administer any sort of sanctions on it. And it has 45 days to uh, for, upon receiving a referral, 45 days to either issue a report or say that they're extending the matter. Has Representative Ocasio-Cortez responded to this investigation announcement? Yeah, so a spokesperson for her office um, said that she was confident the case would be dismissed. Uh, the quote was, the congresswoman is already has always taken ethics incredibly seriously, refusing any donations from lobbyists, corporations, or other special interests. And that's that's pretty standard fare for what we'll see from the responses for, for lawmakers when they're facing one of these investigations. Sometimes they will come out and share the details of it. Um, the, the committee was up front today saying, you know, by House rules, we are not sharing any details about this until the matter is complete. In the past, some Congress people have gotten out in front of it and just said, hey, this is what the deal is. I took care of it. It's no big deal, whatever. Um, you know, and then the investigation continues anyways. But most likely, if we're going to find out specifically what this uh, investigation is in, it's going to be because uh, AOC's office tells us. Zach, as we're sitting here talking, your story has really blown up on social media and you just published a little while ago. Do you think because of the attention that it's getting, it would have been a smarter move for her to have gotten out in front of this. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not going to give any media tips to, to her office. I think they're pretty savvy as it is and, you know, played it how they think is probably in their best interest. And anything she does is going to get news attention. You know, it doesn't really matter. We've seen the Internet blowing up about her purse. So, you know, just the difference this time is it, it is a legitimate congressional ethics inquiry into what she's doing. But, um, you know, we're, we'll have to wait and see to find out what it really is. Got it. I do want to talk about another uh, ethics investigation that you did mention, and that involves outgoing Representative Madison Cawthorn. What can you tell us? Sure. So Madison Cawthorn uh, 
pumped up a cryptocurrency called Let's Go Brandon. And it was tied into the whole Let's Go Brandon meme. I'm not going to get into the details. Um, that was going around. It still is, I guess, kind of big in some conservative quarters. So there was a cryptocurrency that came out. And what this report found was that he had purchased it at below market value the day before some big news was coming out that the cryptocurrency was going to have a deal with the NASCAR driver, Brandon Brown, who is the um, with the Brandon of Let's Go Brandon. And the price then shot up. And he then sold a lot of what he had purchased. And then over the next two weeks, he sold more and more of it. So what the committee decided was that he, the committee ruled that he had um, received a gift, an improper gift, in the fact that he had the knowledge and the opportunity to buy that uh, cryptocurrency at that price. And so they fined him $15,000. $14,000 of it is uh, he needs to donate to a charity of his choosing, and that's to pay back for the ill-gotten gains. And then the other $1,000 are fines to the U.S. Treasury for um, failing to disclose his purchases of crypto in the first place. What's probably more interesting was, though, was what they exonerated him on. What was he exonerated on? So the committee was not able to find any evidence regarding two other claims that had been made about Cawthorn. And these were widely publicized at the time they came out during his campaign. Uh, the first one was that he had had an improper relationship with a staffer. The committee said it did not find any evidence that had taken place. Uh, and any any pictures that it had already seen were taken before he was in Congress, which means they didn't have jurisdiction. And the other was a charge of nepotism. And that one didn't stick because the cousin involved was a second cousin. Got it. But the punishment that he did receive, that $15,000 fine, is this a standard punishment for this type of investigation? Yeah, you'll often see that they'll have to pay back. The, and you see this with FBC reports as well, that if they were to get a legal con campaign contribution, they'll often be required to disgorge that to a charity. Um, what stands out here is that the House Ethics Committee could have just let this one go. You know, he is out of Congress. And when he is out of Congress, they lose their jurisdiction. They did not have to move on this with a few weeks left, but they chose to. And I think that tells us a lot about what happens when you come into Congress and you lose your primary and you make accusations that you can't back up against your fellow lawmakers. Uh, you know, they're they're not going to look the other way when given the opportunity to. Does this show that he's not the most likable Congress member in Congress right now? Well, I, I think the whole um, cocaine fueled orgies uh, accusations probably took that that you know, made him a little bit of a of a pariah on Capitol Hill, and I think that uh, you know it'll be really interesting to see in the next Congress when all of the people who are also under ethics investigation who didn't get reelected we'll look and see if the cases against them were pursued over the next few weeks. And I bet very few of them are. I mean, there's seven or eight other Congress people with open ethics investigations who are not coming back for the next Congress. And I bet those investigations get shuttered. We'll, we'll get notes that they've been mute because the people are out of office. Interesting. And has Representative Cawthorn responded to this? No. Um, Representative Cawthorn, it's been reported by uh, one of the papers down in Nashville, uh, he is staffed. His offices have been closed for several weeks, both in D.C. and in his home district. I called both of them. His D.C. district uh, led me to a voicemail that was just a busy signal. And the mailbox was full at his district one. And then emailing people who used to work for him, they're either no longer with Congress or they're working for other lawmakers right now. So it is it is difficult to get a hold of, uh, of Representative Cothborn. Is it normal to close up shop like that before your term's over? Um, this is probably egregious. You know, it's it's a little bit of a lame duck session for the, especially for outgoing members. Um, you know, I'd equate it to senior year of college after you've already lined up your job and have enough credits to graduate. It's kind of like, all right, I'm done here. Um, but usually you'd expect them to at least go through the motions. I mean, he's still a government employee. He is on government salary. He is a, a working member of Congress for another month. And um, I'm don't know if he's doing anything. Like I said, his offices have been reported to be shuttered. Do you have any indication of what's next for Madison Cawthorn? I don't. I don't. Um, I, I can speculate that it'll probably involve right-wing media because that seems to be where most outgoing far-right members of Congress end up. I do want to pivot now to news out of the Trump Organization, which this week has been found guilty of criminal tax fraud. What can you tell us about that? 
Sure. They were found of improperly compensating employees by providing fringe benefits that were not taxed, and they were fined a um, million dollars. Not much money by Trump standards. You know, we value him his worth at over three billion dollars. So it's it's a little bit of a slap on the wrist. It does look bad that you know the president's company was was found guilty of this, but their ramifications aren't that aren't going to be that severe for for the Trump organization. I do want you to talk about Alan Weisselberg. What can you tell us about him? Sure. So he was the chief financial officer, longtime CFO of the Trump Org. Had actually started there before Donald was the head. He worked for Fred Trump, Donald's father. And most of the allegations revolved around him in terms of getting apartments and uh, I believe it was tuition and cars that were used for him and his family. Uh, and that counted as part of his compensation. And he agreed to testify against the Trump Org. But you could tell he wasn't going to say too much that was damning because after he reached his plea bargain, he celebrated at a party with Donald Trump. So usually if someone's about to you know, ratch you out, you're not going to have them over to your house for, for cocktails. Yeah, that makes sense. So did he say he was acting alone or I guess at least not at the direction of Donald Trump? That was largely the push was that it was just we did these things or they, they shifted the blame around to other people. And you know, the prosecutors did keep hammering home Donald Trump, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, although he was not a defendant in it. Um, and apparently you know, the jury certainly it took him a little bit over a day, I think, and the jury certainly bought it. Will this impact Donald Trump directly? No. What about the kids? Don Jr., Ivanka, Eric, is anyone getting in trouble from the Trump family? I don't think so. I mean, none of them are, are involved in criminal charges in, in, in this case. Um, you know, reputational, your reputations have been staked. You already have your opinion on them. Business-wise, if you're going to do business with the Trumps, you know what you're getting involved with. There's no shortage of ink on, uh, on the Trump org out there. So I really don't see this mattering all that much. Um, you know, it is a piece of, you know, that, that said, it was important that these steps were taken, that we did have this legal procedure to document that what took place was wrong. Now, whether that leads to any actual uh, ramifications for the person who committed those crimes, that's another story. But at least it has been documented, like, you can't do this, even though your company is owned by the former president of the United States. This is wrong, and we are going to find you. And the Manhattan DA said that the verdict holds that these Trump companies um, holds them, quote, accountable for their long running criminal scheme. So is there a specific person other than the Trump companies getting in trouble here other than Weiselberg? Um, you know, they, they've shifted the blame around to a few other people. Weiselberg got the, the brunt of it because I think he was the largest beneficiary of it. Um, but, you know, the, the DA statements overblown you know it's a, it's a million dollar fine it's not a big deal at all it's it, it looks good for a press release for the manhattan da um it's a slap on the wrist for the trump organization it might change how they they operate a little bit internally they'll probably be a little bit stricter on this stuff but um it's it's not a big deal zach you cover all of the investigations and cases against trump how does this stack up to the other 30 ones that he is involved in either peripherally or fully well the big difference is it's been resolved that's that most of these cases are tied up for years they're civil matters versus criminal which this one is and this one got resolved rather quickly i mean some of these other things have been going on for years like the the whole fight over his um releasing his taxes to congress i mean that that started years ago and it just happened a couple weeks ago that he, it finally that Congress finally got him. So um, this was certainly one of the faster moving court cases involving the Trumps. And what's the one that has the most legs, do you think? Uh, the DOJ investigation in terms of national security matters, that the classified material at Mar-a-Lago. Um, I think that's hands down the most serious that affects the country. It's not a business matter. It's not a personal issue. It's not, it doesn't have to do with, um, you know, there's not one specific victim you know, as, as, as offensive as, you know, his accusations against uh, E. Jean Carroll are, they were directed just at her mm -hmm. um, when he and I, I think this is this is a huge issue in terms of national security. Got it. Zach Everson, thank you so much. My pleasure.